Hi guys, I'm Pat and I'm Jeanette and this is Ecology Matters and today we're on the site and we're looking at ponds, we're looking at issues to do with great crested newts and we're looking at invasive species. But we, what we're looking at here is a green buffer so it's a, a strip that's going to be left around the edge of the development site in between one development site and another one actually and the developers made a commitment to maintaining it. This is bulrush or cattail if you're in America. It's a, a big stocky pioneer species often found associated with water bodies in this and other countries and here it's a kind of a primary colonist of this new water body which has developed probably as an accident in relation to the groundworks that are being carried out or have been carried out recently at the site. What's the value of this pond in terms of ecology, biodiversity, wildlife, nature conservation, whatever sort of phrase you want to use on a development site like this? Well, it's, it's adding some diversity. It's one of very few ponds here. I think this is one of two ponds on this site, actually. It's certainly got a range of species obviously associated with it some of which are quite specific to these wetland environments or more likely to be found in these wetland environments it's something that's uh, attractive it's got an educational value it's ticking a number of boxes for both the developer and for the local planning authority in terms of nature conservation it lies within a green buffer so it's contributing towards a green buffer if we just move up here you can see that there's a, a wider area of land into which this pond sort of fits quite comfortably but if we now turn around and pan a little bit further you can see that it lies right adjacent to a road so the job today is to come and have a look at an amphibian underpass i don't know if anyone's been here to check if it's been put in correctly or if it's working but let's go and see if we can find it and have a look at what it's like. So there's a ditch that runs through the site. It's part of a quite a large site that's been split up into different units. Half of it's been developed and the rest is going to be developed over the next few years. The underpass was put in when the road, a new road was established. And now we have to see if A, it's been put in correctly and B, if it's functional. The first job, however, is to try and find it. Okay, success. I've actually found the entrance. As you can see, it's pretty clear, but I'm just going to shine my torch down it to see if there's anything I can spot that I can't see without that extra bit of light. Okay, I can see a fair way in. It's all clear. It's very dry and it's got quite dense vegetation on the top and around. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. The newts wouldn't have any trouble um wading through long grass in fact they quite like it but what we need to do now is go and check the other side and make sure that it's clear so that if there is anything using it or needs to use it they can actually get through this is an interesting one as they all are with a number of different issues um here we've got um uh the boundary of the site behind me and what we're looking at here is uh, uh, an area of great crested newt exclusion fencing or some sort of fencing that's been put in in relation to great crested newts. They're in the area of land, the parcel of land behind the fence. I'm in the development site. Now, there's two issues here that we stopped to look at in particular. One is the newt fencing. We'll come to that in a moment. And the other one is the Himalayan balsam. So here's the Himalayan balsam. Um, and what we've got here is a, a bit of an issue in that, well, first of all, the people developing the site don't know about the balsam. Um, secondly, there's a lot of balsam here. And thirdly, it's intricate, intricately even entwined with the, uh, the newt fencing, which clearly, in terms of maintaining the newt fencing, creates some issues. Uh, the fourth and rather interesting uh, complication of this development is that a pond um, is supposed to be going in just about where this balsam is and very close to the newt fencing as part of a what was proposed a long time ago as an amphibian scheme. What is now um, problematic is the combination of all these things creates a number of issues in terms of ecology 
<laughs> and environmental management and uh, part of our job today is to work out how to deal with those. And here is the newt fence, uh, or rather here is a buried newt fence, buried in Himalayan balsam and various other vegetation. You can see that it's quite a... Um, well, you can't actually see. That's the point, really, that I'm making. There is a fence here, and the fence has been overgrown considerably by a range of different things. It's also on its side in places. In other words, it hasn't really been maintained. It's often a case with these legacy features. What you tend to find is that on sites like this, one group of developers or one set of people have put this in, these measures in place and then they kind of passed it on to another group of people who unfortunately aren't aware or don't have the same sort of background information and therefore it gets left and it's picked up at what often happens with ecologists at the last minute where we have to uh, try to make amends or satisfy the council or put other measures in place to safeguard things from that point onwards. But the thing that's entertaining uh, Jeanette and myself is that as part of our survey of this green buffer we come across some unexpected bits and pieces let me just show you so here's the uh, the latest addition um, I'll leave it to you viewers to decide how much value you think there is associated with this um, can you guess what it is from here let me go a little bit closer and see if that helps bear in mind this is a an area designated specifically on the development site for nature conservation and it's to be kept of, uh, in a good order managed to create the best possible opportunities and um, this is the bus stop which is obviously an integral part of any green corridor of any green buffer absolutely essential not at all important that it's kept upright of course or that people are using it simply that it's there and by its very existence it adds so much to the uh, to the green corridor uh, you can see from the, the look on Jeanette's face that she's stunned about how much thought has gone into this. Um, not only have we got that uh, delightful bus stop, but we've got the, uh, the inevitable and always pleasing to see pipework laid neatly in the green buffer as well. An ecologist job. <laughs> and the things that we come across. And just in case anyone was at all unclear or unsure about whether or not they could catch a bus from this bus stop which is currently on its side in the green buffer zone, here's a helpful sign that says there are currently no bus services from this stop. You don't say. <laughs> 